They starting to call me the goat, yeah, yeah. They starting to call me the goat, yeah, yeah. They starting to call me the goat, yeah, yeah. I told a bad bitch, give me dope, yeah, yeah. All of my niggas are float, yeah, yeah. Twenties all over the float, yeah, yeah. Money all over the float, yeah, yeah. Now they say I am the goat. But all of those were necessary prior to this. So the flat iron kind of like seals the cuticle and it makes it, um, it makes all the hydration and all the moisturizing that you've done obviously stay in, right? That's why they say the silk press allows the hair to stay silky a little bit more longer. It doesn't really allow that much humidity, um, you know, to kind of like affect you know, becoming thicker. Okay, so. You have to make sure for a silk press, you have to use a good quality of flat iron. Obviously the best one is the one that has the titanium plate. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Now as far as the heat setting, always go yeah, so yes, always go according to the texture of the hair. Okay. Okay. So if you're dealing with maybe coarser texture, okay, you wanna probably put it to you know four up you know up to four fifty, because usually coarse texture can handle a little bit more heat. If you're dealing with, you know, maybe color-treated hair, or maybe, uh, usually you do a silk press on natural hair, so there's really no chemically treated hair that you would be doing this on. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, if you're dealing with chemically treated hair, you always want to keep it low. With color-treated hair and with fine texture, you always want to keep it low. So start by 375, 380, 390, and then see if you can reach up to 400. Okay, so how you can tell if it's too hot or hot is too hot, usually as soon as you put the, uh, the, the, the plate into the hair, it doesn't leave no marks or dents or lines uh, in there. So if you don't see no you know, marks into the hair, that means is the proper setting of heat. And you can actually tell, because you see a little bit more like smoke coming through, or you can tell like it's really getting silky, okay? And it's not giving you no marks, so that's the proper heat. So. The next thing will have to be the amount of hair that you're working each time. You can tell already how thin each section has to be, right? You can literally see, I can literally see through what her neck is. So the reason why the, the area has to be really, really, well, the section is really small because the additional of heat that goes into the hair, what happens is it breaks the bonds, right? So if I'm grabbing a large section of hair, not each bond is going to break properly, not giving me that silk look that I'm looking for. So you want to allow less hair so they can get a good amount of heat, okay? Number two, you always have to glide the tail comb first, then the flat iron after. The, the teeth kind of like get into, you know, well, the, the teeth separate the strands of the hair. So by separating them and then you gliding this afterwards, right, it, it kind of like makes sure, see this one is a little hot, see how it made that dent? In there, so and I lower it. You have it to four fifty. Four fifty. Yes, it'll make a dent. It will make a dent. See how it kind of like has a dent right at the scalp here, and also at the scalp. Trust me, if you follow all of these steps, right? See how I tilt it a little bit. Comb first and flat iron. Comb first and flat iron, and you want to do this process really slow. Okay, you don't want to glide this really quick. That's the problem sometimes with a lot of people using flat iron. And they glide it so quick and so fast and they handle too much large amounts of hair at the time, and they wonder, oh my God, why is not getting smooth, you know? I'm just sitting here and just doing this over and over. 